Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on Boosie and how he was able to beat his Fed case. Boosie, a southern rap legend hailing from the streets of Louisiana's South Baton Rouge. Most would say he's famous. Some would claim he's infamous. But if there's one title that fits his persona, it's undefeated. July 12th, 2024, Boosie would take the Instagram with an emotional post announcing his federal gun case has been dismissed. Good sucker ass niggas. Hate me, bitch ass niggas. He'd give all glory to God saying thank you. You never leave me. You make a way out of no way. You made me beat South Baton Rouge. You made me beat cancer. You made me beat death row. You made me beat gunshots. You made me beat fed cases. You forgave my sins. Back in May of 2023, an undercover San Diego police officer was conducting intelligence gathering through Instagram. Specifically, he was investigating an account named KP2 Market Maid. It belonged to a documented neighborhood crit named Alondre Dickerson, who went by the rap name KP. He was one of many taken down by the feds in 2014 for racketeering. Come to find out, he was a member of the Tycoons. A money gang made up of West Coast Crips, East Side Skyline Pyrus, Lincoln Park Bloods, and Neighborhood Crips. They'd all join forces to engage in a variety of illegal activities, but their main hustle was sex trafficking. According to the indictment, they'd target women and girls from the ages of 12 to 20 and use older females to recruit the younger ones from nearby schools. So what does this have to do with Boosie? Not a fuck thing. Boosie was in Dago to shoot a music video with a rapper by the name of Bully3, and KP2 just so happened to be one of Three's associates. The San Diego police officers would view a story posted to KP's Instagram. An unidentified male wearing red pants and a white t-shirt can be seen with a black handgun in his waistband. KP would tag Boosie's Instagram account along with Bully3. The officer would identify the man as Boosie, and going over to Boosie's Instagram, the officer found Boosie's account was live and he could be seen in the same outfit. The officer also observed the 49th street sign as an unknown male stated they were live in the streets of San Diego. Officers were well aware that the area of 49th and Guyman is known territory of the neighborhood Crips. A police helicopter was requested to fly over the area with a provided description of Boosie, and at 3.10 in the afternoon, Boosie could be seen from the helicopter getting into a black Mercedes SUV. Officers on the ground would locate the black Mercedes pulling it over after watching it fail to stop at a red light. The vehicle would continue to slowly drive another block before coming to a complete stop, while officers could observe the rear passengers' heads moving side to side. It was believed they may be attempting to conceal firearms or illegal contraband. Officers located three men in the vehicle, the driver in front, and in the back, Boosie and his security. Officers asked if any weapons were inside of the vehicle, and Boosie answered he didn't have any weapons, but his security did. His security would point to the right side of his body where he wore a black satchel. Everyone was removed from the vehicle and placed in handcuffs as officers located a 9mm Hellcat inside of the satchel. Officers would find a Glock 19 inside of the vehicle on the seat between where Boosie and his security sat. Boosie, his security, and his driver would all be taken to the San Diego Police Department for further processing and investigation. During processing, Boosie yelled at his security and asked why he told the police the gun was on the seat. Officers then heard Boosie say, you told me they were in the bag. Officers would locate videos in which they were able to produce screenshots of Boosie walking around with a gun in his waistband. 
A search of Boosie's criminal history would reveal he's a convicted felon, and Boosie would be charged with felony firearm possession for the Glock 19. June 14, 2023, Boosie would attend court under the impression he'd be receiving a plea deal, ending with probation. As Boosie made his way to the podium, the courts were interrupted by the feds, who announced an indictment and took Boosie into custody for being a felon in possession of a firearm. In less than two weeks, Boosie would walk out of MCC San Diego on pretrial release, the equivalent of bond in a state case, and for that, Boosie would have to pay $100,000. With evidence photos already making their way to social media, and the fact that the feds have a 98% conviction rate, the fans, the streets, and the internet expected Boosie to be sentenced to federal prison. Well, Boosie and God must be the other 2%. Megan Blanco, one of Boosie's attorneys, would file a motion to dismiss the case. And how was she gonna do that? USA vs. Duarte. Steven Duarte, aka Shorty, is a California man who in 2020 was arrested for being a felon in possession of a firearm after being seen by police throwing a handgun out of a moving vehicle. He'd be indicted by a grand jury, to which they looked through his five previous felony convictions for vandalism, felon in possession of a firearm, possession of a controlled substance, and two other convictions for evading a peace officer. Duarte would take the case to trial, receiving 51 months in federal prison, to which he would appeal. Duarte's appeal would state it's unconstitutional to strip him of the Second Amendment right, as he's never been convicted of a crime of violence. See, back when the Second Amendment was written, in 1791, only the most serious of crimes would prevent someone from possessing a firearm again, such as murder. And in those times, it was likely you'd be sentenced to death anyways, so you didn't need to worry about getting your musket back. But nowadays, a lifetime ban follows any felony conviction for a list of offenses that didn't even exist back then. So Duarte's criminal history of vandalism, felon in possession of a firearm, possession of a controlled substance, and fleeing a police officer would have been considered misdemeanor petty crimes or just flat out didn't exist as crimes in the late 1700s. Based on that, Duarte would appeal his conviction as his crimes did not meet the founding father's standard of being worthy of a lifetime firearms ban permanently depriving him of his second amendment right and the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals would rule in his favor. Stephen Duarte's case would be overturned, he'd be released from federal prison, and the courts would rule non-violent felons in America who have completed their original sentence for the crimes they've committed do have the right to possess firearms. So what does this mean for Boosie? As many of you know, Boosie was once arrested for murder. It was suspected Boosie ordered a 15-year-old hitman named Marlo Mike to commit a series of killings on the rapper's behalf. These murders would later be highlighted in Boosie's song, Murder Was The Case. They said, we got you on six bodies in two attempts. I said, sir, you lying, because I don't do attempts. Boosie would fight his case from death row in the Louisiana State Penitentiary known as Angola. Nicknamed the Alcatraz of the South, of the Angola Plantation. This is one of the few prisons left in America that merely visiting will make you think you were witnessing slavery from 200 years ago. Boosie fought his case just a short distance from the execution chamber, and in 2012, was acquitted of all charges. So while the history behind Boosie may seem violent, his actual criminal history only has three convictions, for possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute, bringing illegal contraband into a prison, and criminal conspiracy to incite a felony. Like Duarte, none of these crimes should ban Boosie for life from firearms, and because of Duarte, the felony gun possession case against Boosie was dropped. Looking back at Boosie's post, he thanked God for beating South Baton Rouge, for beating cancer, for beating death row, for beating gunshots, and now for beating his Fed case. And like I said in the beginning, while some would say he's infamous, if there's one title that fits Boosie's persona, it's undefeated.
Now, as I've said in multiple videos, Boosie is one of my favorite rappers. If you grew up in the South at any motherfucking point in time, you know how big of an influence Boosie has been. A lot of people in the South were raised on his music. And this isn't just a win for him. This is a win for all felons in America. Because the second you're found guilty of a felony, you're told you can't possess firearms ever again unless you have your rights restored. But even then, certain states have certain charges that they'll never let you restore. So it's like they've just found ways to make it to where you can never access firearms again. But because of this new court ruling, and I want to be clear, this doesn't mean everyone can just walk around with guns now. This is going to go in front of the Supreme Court, and they're going to actually have to figure out what the fuck to do and adjust some of these laws. Because it's even been said some violent felons even may get their rights back to possess firearms. Most likely, as long as you're not out here just killing people. You know what I mean? But something along those lines rights are going to be coming back and me personally i look at it like this if we have a president who's a felon this might also be one of the leading things that makes a president want to fight for felons to get their rights back because now a president understands what it's like to be one but this case, it was just such a curveball because Boosie wasn't affiliated with the neighborhood Crips in San Diego. He was out there for a feature. He doesn't know who's who. And one Crip that's out there is under investigation, got wrapped up in a weird ass racketeering case back in the day. Police are watching him and because he wants to take pictures of Boosie, clearly with a gun on his back, now Boosie got a fucking helicopter following him around. So basically, I mean, I'm not saying dude snitched, but dude's sloppiness was the sole reason Boosie ended up even catching the case to begin with. But man, it's just, it's powerful how Boosie speaks on God and how many things he's gone through and God got him through. You know what I mean? You can say whatever you want. You fighting cases like that, you, you're gonna stop praying to whoever the fuck you can pray to. And you're going to hope somebody answers you back. And to see, yet again, he's made it out of a situation that potentially could have put him away for up to 10 years. It's a win for everybody. You know what I mean? It's a win for the fans. It's a win for him and his family. And for the felons out there, this could be major. However this goes, USA versus Duarte, however high they take this, we, as felons, need to watch this. And if there's any way we can sway the crowd in our favor to us getting our rights back to where we're not permanently judged for the rest of our lives, to where you go to get an apartment, you don't have to worry about telling them about your felony convictions. If the president can have felonies and be the fucking president, we should be able to work wherever the fuck we want to work. But you got to start off small, and this may be the beginning we need to keep our eyes on. But hey, it's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all and y'all rocking with me. Till next time.